Hi, this is Ashish Shankar, Head Investment Advisory at Motilal Oswal Wealth Management. I am happy to present to you our new series, Know Your Foresee Manager. The idea behind this series is to try and understand the philosophy and the process of the successful managers who are managing your wealth and how they will grow their wealth. Today we have someone who is a very eminent practitioner in his own field. He has been in the equity markets for over two decades and was really the man behind the success of Access Mutual Fund. Most of the funds in Axis were top decile for almost five years and he was also awarded the most consistent equity manager by Outlook Money. We have Pankaj Murarka here with us today to talk about his investing journey, process and philosophy behind the success and also what he's trying to do at Renaissance Capital Management. Uh, welcome Pankaj to the show. Thanks Ashish, it's always a pleasure. So, uh, we've had a really interesting four years. I mean, we saw a government with absolute majority with a lot of promise to deliver on reforms and that excited our equity markets and we've had a phenomenal run, albeit with some, you know, turbulence in between. Uh, but I would think that today we are again at a spot where, you know, sentiment is waning and you have a lot of global issues. So, how do you really see markets from here? I think we are at a very interesting point in this whole economic cycle. Uh, you know, if you look at the last four or five years, while when this government came in, there was a lot of expectations in terms of what they'll do on the economic front. They didn't do much on the first two or three years. As a result, if you see actually at India's growth, it didn't really pick up in the last four years. India's right. growth actually has been below potential now for four successive years in a row. But at the same time, given the inherent, uh, you know, strength of and the diversity of Indian economy, we had about, you know, a lot of these businesses, maybe I think 100 odd companies across consumer and retail businesses yeah. or rural businesses, which uh, despite the headwinds from the real economy, delivered some very solid growth and they have uh, created enormous amount of wealth for investors. But at the broader aggregate level, if you look at earnings growth uh, for the index companies or for the nifty companies, it's been into like something like single digit. But I think now we've reached a stage where, you know, the Indian real economy is really troughed out. And I think India's uh, real growth is going to accelerate from here on. So as a result, uh, earnings growth, which has been elusive uh, all along this cycle, right. will start becoming reflective. And I think it's a great time as India's growth picks up. So on one hand, you'll have real economy and sectors related to that will, that will start doing well. And at the same time, some of those potentially high growth companies will continue to do well and probably do better because of the tailwinds they will have because of the growth. So I think it's a uh, really interesting time from an uh, Indian equities perspective when you look forward for the next few years. Right. So if I hear you right, Pankaj, you are quite bullish on earnings going forward. So my question is, what makes you so bullish on earnings? And where do you think the opportunities are in the current market cycle? So, you know, as I said, uh, it's been about four years where India's growth has been below potential. There were significant macro headwinds and uh, policy issues that India had to deal with. And the last one that we're trying to deal with is, uh, you know, the corporate uh, stress that's around and we're trying to resolve it through the new regulation, the insolvency regulations. But I think as we get through this over the next four or six quarters, the fact is aggregate level, corporate India is looking far more healthier. They've already started deleveraging their balance sheets over the last 12 or 18 months. So on an aggregate basis, corporate debt is actually coming down. That's right. pretty interesting, you know, because that creates space for creating new capacity and for doing new capex for these corporates uh, as and when the growth recovers. And at the same time, in some of the sectors, we have started seeing initial signs of recovery in the demand growth. So I think a mix of two, which effectively means that, you know, going forward, probably you should see higher demand and which should feed into growth for the overall economy. And at the same time, the corporates have the ability to go back and invest to, you know, create new capacities for growth. Right. So I think uh, sectors which are related to the real economy across manufacturing and services sectors right. are something which looks pretty interesting. And we find some very deep value in some of those sectors because some of them are really currently out of favor at this point of time. Right. So I understand that, you know, you've launched a new strategy, the India Next uh, portfolio to capture some of the opportunities that you briefly explained. So what was the inspiration behind the launch of the strategy and how do you think this portfolio will help uh, our clients capture these opportunities in the future? You know, so if you look at it, uh, you know, my view always has been that India is a potential high growth economy for a very long, long time, maybe over the next 20 years. To be able to buy into such a potentially high growth economy, 
at a point of time when its growth is at the lowest point of time because of multiple factors is i think a very exciting opportunity because you're able to buy those uh, when the real economy faces stress the corporate sector or the manufacturing sector and right. businesses which are related to the real economy are the ones where the whole stress gets translated but now we're getting to a stage where all of that stress is getting resolved if you look at those businesses and you look at the outlook for those businesses from the next 5 years perspective then i think some of those businesses you're able to buy if you look at the normalized earnings at valuations which are like two standard deviation below me right. so i think there's significant value that exists in the real economy in india and to be able to buy it at this point of time in the cycle and then ride the whole cycle over the next 4 or 5 years is what drives us towards launching this india next portfolio could you give us couple of case studies or examples of businesses which are go- going through this kind of a patch uh, you know for the benefit uh, of of our clients sure take a classic example of corporate banks they have been at the center of this whole stress because the entire stress on the economy is eventually reflected on their balance sheet they are taking it on their chin some of these banks are very great franchises you know but if you look at their core operating profits it has continued to grow over the last 5 years in fact in some cases it has actually doubled so which is a very right. strong solid growth of 20% plus right. but at the same time their reported profits have shrunk very sharply because of the significant high level of provisions they have to do for their bad loans right. which are nothing but historical bad loans which they are provisioning now once they get through this over the next let's say 4 to 6 quarters their reported profits will look far far superior than right. what they are today you know and if you look at their valuations in the context of where uh, the prices stock prices are i think they represent some very deep value likewise we find similar values across industries which are in and around core sectors of india right. you know so engineering and capital goods is another sector or the other businesses across manufacturing sectors right. where you know because of low capacity utilizations their numbers have been somewhat subdued but uh, we firmly believe that you know a lot of these businesses have made significant investments in their core business over the last 4 or 5 years and as growth recovers they will be the biggest beneficiary of that there is an opportunity i believe to make disproportionate gains from these businesses so i i also understand you know from your approach of investing that you are a stickler for quality now normally what happens is in sectors which are headwinded there are a lot of question marks on the quality of the business or quality of the underlying management how do you ensure that you know whatever companies that you buy are uh, you know ticked off for for some of these uh, parameters yeah i think quality is paramount and should always be for every investor because at the end of the day you know as they say time is a friend of a good quality business but you know uh, quality is something uh, where a lot of these businesses which have gone through a deep cycle might not look as great quality on the current operating numbers but when you look deeper into them there are some very excellent franchises you know because they have a very strong brand they have a good quality management and at the same time they have made significant investments into their business to improve their efficiency and productivity but they have been significantly impacted because of an adverse adverse economic cycle but i think as and when the cycle re- recovers and you look at the normalized revenues and profits of those businesses they look very different from where they are today so i think quality is very important for us and we will continue to do that right and uh, as i understand the india next portfolio will try and capture some of these opportunities now is there something that you wouldn't buy or we wouldn't look at for this portfolio specifically this portfolio primarily focuses on india's real economy because i think that's where we uh, you know see very deep value in lot of sectors and we see significant opportunities so uh, at the same time india is a very diverse economy you have lot of businesses which are significantly export oriented especially in the it and healthcare sector so right. those are the sectors which i don't think we are looking to uh, buy into this portfolio because this portfolio focuses on the core of indian economy pankaj i'm really fascinated by your investment journey from being a sell side analyst at motila loswal and subsequently being an integral part of the investment team at rare enterprises then becoming the cio at access mutual fund to now becoming an entrepreneur and uh, you know launching a investment firm renaissance capital management uh, talk us through your investment journey and how that has shaped your unique investment process s corp well i must say i have been really privileged because i had an opportunity through the course of my career to work with some great places and with some of the finest minds in the business of investing in india you know so while working with mutilal also was really fun and i had an opportunity to gain a lot of insights from the thinking process of ramdev ji 
you know rare was a phenomenal experience uh, rare by itself was a pretty unique organization at that point of time right. because one purely because of the founder himself who himself is nothing less than a legend you know Absolutely. with an with an extraordinary track record of long term performance and not only that but at the same time he is a very sharp and successful trader as well you know so right. he has this unique uh, rakesh ji has this unique combination of left brain right brain syndrome and the best part of it is he he has the ability to use both of them simultaneously at the same time which i have not seen in any other individual uh, you know that fantastic. really fascinating fantastic yeah and rare was very uniquely positioned at that point of time because it was uh, the only organization which was working across all the spectrum of market so it was doing public markets it was doing private equity and it was doing pipes so the exposure you get across all the three sector of markets is like really phenomenal so uh, you know and i think uh, i must say uh, working with those private equity firms and pipes at rare was a phenomenal experience for me because it when you work with those companies very closely you realize how challenging it is to build businesses on the ground and right. real the challenges of scaling up business in the real world you know right. i think that certainly made me a much better uh risk manager because it helps you understand uh, understand the risk of building a business and then you use all those learnings and go back and apply to your public market companies uh, right. in your risk framework you know in fact i would rather go ahead and say that every public market investor should go and spend a few years in the private equity world to understand how businesses are built in the real world you know okay. because as a public market investor it doesn't give you that kind of exposure subsequently from rare i worked with merrill that was again a very unique opportunity to run a long only and a long short fund on a global platform you know and right. again that was sort of a startup because that business didn't exist in india so we built that business grounds up on a merrill platform right. i must say that my experience with merrill uh, contributed immensely in terms of my understanding of global macroeconomics and global risk because in today's world financial markets are far more integrated and you need a better understanding of you know the global risk and global Absolutely. macro economic headwinds and there merrill helped me a lot finally in 2009 you know when axis approached me to be part of the team to build up an amc for them from grounds up i took that opportunity i thought it will be a good idea to put all those unique experiences and learnings that i have had to work and see if we can build a amc trying to do things differently and far better than a lot of our peers and we had a fascinating journey at axis when we started as a startup in 2009 and it became a very large uh, asset management company over the next 8 years that I was around absolutely i always had this entrepreneurial instinct in myself which i wanted to do at some point of time so uh, finally i decided to take that plunge and you said i said you know now it's time to pursue entrepreneurship and which is where i founded renaissance investment managers right so uh, if you look at, look at the crux of all of it uh you know while i realized some of the things very early on in my career for example i realized that equity is in a growth asset class and it's growth which what which is what creates value for investors over a medium term to longer term uh what i took slightly more longer time to figure out was that not all growth is value accretive there is at right. times growth which is bad growth and which is value destructive and it's right. important to distinguish between good growth and bad growth And the biggest learning for me for that came from the technology meltdown because you had this all these hundreds of companies you know which were all growing at a very phenomenally high rate and which were perceived high growth right but if you look at it in 2001 90% of those companies did not survive the meltdown you know Absolutely. which if and you investors lost 90% of their capital right. right what you realize in hindsight where they were not solid quality businesses but they were businesses which were riding a tailwind with no sustainable competitive edge and which is when i when i reflected on it i came to a conclusion that if you want to do long term wealth creation then while growth is important what you also need is sustainable growth and good quality growth and which is where i you know discovered my investment philosophy sq garp as i call it right. which is all about sustainable quality growth at reasonable price since then i've been following this for a very long time and it has been working very fine for me fantastic uh pankaj you know at motilal oswal we're all very passionate about knowledge and reading are there any books which influenced uh, your investment style and anything that you could recommend to our clients well there are a lot of books uh, meaning right fr- from the basic ones like the intelligent investors and so on and right. so forth and there's top 3 but i think uh, 
if I could talk about few of them which had a very deep influence on me, right. I think uh, one is uh, the book uh, on John Templeton, uh, written by Lauren Templeton, his niece. Right. Uh, what really fascinated me about that is while everyone talks about investment philosophy, Sir John Templeton talks about not only investment philosophy, but he also talks about philosophy in life. For right. example, for a guy who's practicing value investing, he says value investing is not just an investment style. It's a lifestyle which you have to adopt in every aspects of your life. Just right. to give you an example, when John Templeton bought a house for himself, you know, he wanted to buy furniture for the house, to furnish his house. Right. Being a value investor himself, he waited for three months to buy, uh, you know, the same furniture uh, from a neighborhood furniture store at a discount. So he waited for the discount sale so that he can buy, go and buy the same furniture and save few hundred dollars, you know. Right. So, he says that, you know, whatever you do in your personal life cannot be disconnected with what you do in your portfolios. So, value investing is not just an investment style, but it's a lifestyle, right. you know. Uh, so, that's one which has had a very deep impact on me. Over the course, you know, I've also realized and I've come to a conclusion that investing is an abstract science. It's not an absolute science. Right. It's an abstract science. So it gives you an opportunity to draw your own canvas. There are no defined rules. And you can always expand the boundaries of, you know, the principles of investing. Sure. So, I've been doing a lot of reading which is outside the world of investing and trying to apply those learnings to my investment philosophy and process. One of the books which has had a very deep impact on me in terms of how I look at my investing companies and management has been a book titled From Third World to First World uh, by Lee Kuan Yew. Lee right. Kuan Yew was the founder, founding father of Singapore. Singapore. And it's essentially a story of Singapore, transformation of Singapore over the last 50 years. So, in 50s when Singapore uh, was separated from Malaysia, it was a very small island. With, right. They had no, no natural resources. It was a very poor country and very limited skill set. From those kind of headwinds or disadvantages, he transformed Singapore in the next 50 years to one of the most successful economy in the world with probably amongst the highest per capita income and probably one of the most technologically advanced economy in the world. The kind of transformation he brought about in Singapore and that too in a very short span of 50 years is right. just remarkable. Right. So, that's another one which has had a really deep impact on me. Fantastic. Pankaj, uh, thank you very much for sharing your valuable time, insights and your journey of investing. Uh, I'm sure uh, our, our clients would uh, gain several insights from this uh, short talk. And I wish you all the success and all the best for the India Next portfolio. Thank you, Ashish. It's uh, been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching Know Your 4C Manager. The endeavor is to bring you closer to your winning managers. For any further queries, please write in to us on our email, Twitter handle, or subscribe to our YouTube videos. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>